With the recent release of the Thai SE bomber for the First Order, the First Order can finally have torpedo and ordnance bomb options. But one in pilot in particular uses these options extremely well while having amazing maneuverability. And this pilot is Breach. Breach is probably the best 5 initiative ordnance carrier in the game currently right now. And the reason why is because of his ability. After you fully execute a maneuver or perform a boost action, if you move through an enemy ship, you may acquire a lock on that ship. Now, this is a really good pilot ability that can easily lead to a focus and a target lock. Combine that with the torpedo slot on Breach, you easily have a focus and target lock torpedo attack. And this situation illustrates that perfectly. Before I get to that ship ability, however, we need to go over his uh, ship ability, Pursuit Thrusters. During the system phase, we perform a boost action. So the boost action on the TIE SE bombers, including Breach, is red. That means that after Breach would do a boost, he would become stressed. Um, and as we're going to see in the example, uh, doing a boost is, <laughs> can really help out with his ability. So to get through this, you have to use the upgrade card engine upgrade in order to make that boost a white. And this is a must-have. And this card's only like three points, so it's like really good. And in this example, I'm going to be putting it on Breach as a must-have because it makes him so much easier to use. It also gives him a lot more usability in overall and just makes his ability way better. So engine upgrade on Breach in this video, you don't have to put it on him all the time. It's just uh, I feel like it's really almost not to include on him. And yeah, so let's get into the example. So during the system phase, you can perform your boost action before any ship moves. So we're going to go in and do that on this three initiative X-Wing pilot. After Breach does his boost, of course, he moves through the ship so he gets his target lock, which we'll see later on when I remember to put the token on the X-Wing. But the X-Wing does its 4K turn. Um, it can do a variety of maneuvers, but in this scenario, doing the 4K turn is probably the best for the X-Wing because it's so close to the other ship. So turning around faster, he can still shoot, right? But then Breach does a too hard maneuver. There's the target lock. <laughs> a too hard maneuver on Breach, and as you can see, the X-Wing is just barely an arc. Breach can take that focus action, and now... He's at a perfect range 2 proton torpedo strike. So that's the easiest setup with Breach with because his uh, too hard maneuver is a white maneuver. But when we look at the rest of his maneuver dial, we'll see that he is actually a lot more capable in a lot of other situations. So like I said, the two hards are white, the three hards are white, the two banks and three banks are white, the one hards are red, the one banks are white, and the one through three four the one through three straight maneuvers are blue. The four forwards are white, and he additionally has three segner loops. Now this is where things get interesting. Being able to have him execute a maneuver through a ship while still being able to turn around his arc in order to shoot them. That's where the three segner loop maneuvers come in. It's almost like having a K-turn where you go through a ship and then get a lock on them and you're, and you're facing their direction and they're in your arc still so you can shoot them. That's what the three segner loops do for, for uh, Breach. So. That's why the three segs are an interesting part of his dial and really add to his ability. Now, of course, they're red, so he's not going to be able to focus per se. But what if there was a card that could do that? Well, there is. There's actually a couple. The first of these is Proud Tradition. So while you have two or fewer stress tokens, you can may perform focus actions even while stressed. The only downside to this card is after you perform an attack, if you are stressed, the defender may spend one focus token or suffer one critical damage to flip this card to its false tradition side, which then treats all your focus actions as red. So you can easily see the advantage uh, and disadvantage of the card, obviously. Like, you can do the focus after doing the three second loop maneuver, but you're not really going to be able to hold that up if they decide to spin the focus or take the crit to um, ruin you. Now, of course, if you do one shot them, they can't really take the crit after that, but. If they don't get one-shotted, then they can choose. So it can easily bite you back in the butt. So the other upgrade, it not only uh, f gives you more options for actions, it just doesn't limit you to performing focus, which is the only reason why we want it. But it doesn't really have that disadvantage. And this upgrade is Pattern Analyzer. While you fully execute a red maneuver, before the check difficulty step, you may perform one action. So basically, this card lets you perform an action right before you get the stress token. Now, technically, you still have your perform action step. It's just blocked by a stress token. So I know a lot of you will be thinking now, wait, why not put Pattern Analyzer with Fanatical? That way you could do a focus because of Fanatical and then do a barrel roll or something with Pattern Analyzer. Well, there's actually a better card that costs the same amount of points that can replace Fanatical and that won't make your focus actions red. Trust me, that's what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to make Breach good not for after, not for before his focus actions become red, but for the entire game. So this upgrade is Ion Limiter Override. 
which reads, after you fully execute a red maneuver, if you, you may perform a barrel roll action, even while stressed. If you do, roll an attack die. On a hit result, gain one strain token, and on a critical result, gain one ion token. Also, sorry for all the fuzziness. I thought the image would come out better, but apparently it didn't, so I'm sorry about that. But basically, this card does what the Pattern Analyzer Proud Tradition combo would by letting you focus and barrel roll. Only, you're not risking your focus actually becoming red for the rest of the entire game, which, to be honest, kind of sucks in this scenario. We want, we want Breach to be a pilot that can be used multiple times, because with that barrel roll, he's going to be able to do arc dodges and stuff like that. So having his focus be red is a no-no. So this card just risks you getting a strain or an ion token, which, an ion token, he already only has a 1 through 3 forward blue maneuver economy anyway, so he's not going to really lose that much getting ionized which should almost never happen, and getting strained isn't going to really harm him either unless the opponents are able to shoot him. And even then, it, he can still probably shrug it off. That means on Breach so far we have Iron Limiter Override, Pattern Analyzer, Proton Torpedoes, and Engine Upgrade, just for the giggles. And all this together is actually only 58 points, which is insane. This is a bomber that gets to boost, then barrel roll, and all at the same time have a focus and target lock off of a single red maneuver, which if you're still kind of hazy on the whole like how this thing works, I'm about to show right now. So during the system phase, you're going to boost where you think your enemy is going to end up. Now you're just lining yourself up for your maneuver, remember. You could boost through someone as well, but in this case, let's say you're getting towards combat. This is a very realistic situation. So the X-Wing moves in and like bit a little bit, but we correct that a little bit. Alright, so the X-Wing is now perfectly centered. Our maneuver was a three seconds loop, which we execute through the X-Wing. And after getting everything all set up, now we get our target lock from the maneuver. Right before we get a stress token, we get the focus token. Then we become stressed, but because we fully executed a maneuver, we can do a barrel roll. Currently, we're at range 1, so the barrel roll is either going to get you to range 2 or 3 to use a torpedo, or it's going to arc dodge for you. It can also do both, basically. So not only is it a good tool for staying alive and we didn't even roll strain so that was a really good deal so not only is it good for you know staying alive by arc dodging but you can also get a beautiful range two shot with your torpedo because that's a range one scenario so now we're at barely range two which is just perfect okay so the next round is where things get difficult obviously breach is stressed he has to do a blue maneuver or white but a blue slightly better the x-wing here is going to town roll in this case because that's probably his best idea maneuver maybe you have three different blue maneuver templates to choose from, a 1, 2, or 3 forward. As you can see, this 3 forward is kind of big and probably not going to work if Breach wants to boost into that X-Wing next round. So in most cases, you simply want to do a 1 forward, because you always want to be thinking about your boost for next round. A, boot, a 1 forward boost plus a 1 forward maneuver is equivalent to a 3 forward maneuver. So Breach still had the target lock on the X-Wing, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to have a new way to get in case you had to spend an next round. So breach this round, can either focus or reload. We're just going to have him focus because he still has a torpedo charge, but in my guess, you would want to reload because the X-Wing is obviously stressed. We're just not showing it there, so he doesn't actually have a token. So taking the reload to recharge one of your torpedoes is probably the better idea. Also notice in that example, we could have dropped a bomb uh, after breach did his initial maneuver, before breach, after breach did his initial boost. That way the X-Wing, when it did its three talent roll, was bombed, but... We, we don't have a bomb, we're just trying to do torpedoes right now. In this case, the X-Wing bumps into the uh, into Breach, trying to do a one bank or one forward, and we can see that Breach will have a good three seconds loop straight through the X-Wing to redo everything all over again. So Breach can do things in multiple times per round. Now, in some situations, uh, even after doing a boost, you kind of want to go for targets that are, let, that are higher initiative. For example, this X-Wing here could do a one bank, but more likely is going to do something like a 4K turn or whatever, just to try to get itself out of Breach's path. Or maybe the player doesn't care and it keeps it there. Regardless, you don't really actually know what a 3 initiative pilot is going to do. It could do that one bank to set up your maneuver, or it could do a 4k turn which completely ruins your strategy. So the best strategy is to always go for the higher initiative pilots, mainly because you know where they're going to end up after doing your boost and maneuver. They don't move until after you're done. So after you do that maneuver through them, you get your target lock, you get a focus, and then you get a stress. And the barrel roll is really where the barrel roll comes in handy for breach. Because with the six initiatives, obviously, you don't really know where they're going to move. So you have to align yourself in the best possible way to get the most arc on them. Now, I think a barrel roll to the right in this situation, which would be to the left of the X-Wing, as I'm showing right here, is the best case scenario. Because it opens our arc to where if 
the pot X-Wing possibly moves to the left, we still have them, but if the X-Wing moves to the right, we definitely have them. See, that's a much more open arc. We have, yeah, a lot more openness there. So the X-Wing in this case, its maneuver was a too hard going that way. Now, in this case scenario, any maneuver that's not a one forward from that X-Wing is going to be at range two to three. Only that one bank towards breach, or the two hard obviously, or the one forward is going to be at range one. So that's kind of where a new upgrade comes in handy, as well as against even lower initiative pilots, especially against lower initiative pilots. Alright, let's say that Breach did his boost, the X-Wing did his one forward, you do a three seconds loop, you barely clear on this maneuver, barely catching the corner of that X-Wing. But the main problem is, as you can already notice, is that we're at range one. So we get the target lock, we get the focus, and then we get a stress, but we're going to try to barrel roll around here. Now barrel rolling this way. Do we increase our range? Well, the answer is no, actually. We're still at range 1. Okay, so then let's try to barrel roll the other way. Now, note, focus and target lock with just 3 attack dice is actually super strong. Not going to lie at all. It's just that we want that 4 dice. So then breach rechecks and still at range 1. So is there anything we can do? Well, no in this case. Simply, the only thing we can do is equip proton rockets. Because we have a beautiful bullseye arc, which is a situation most of the time with breach in these scenarios and you're going to be able to roll that 5 attack dice against that X-Wing. The beauty of Proton Rockets 2 is it works range 1 to 2, so it could even work in other situations. Now, say if it was a higher initiative pilot, like Wedge, going back to the whole higher initiative pilot thing, and he simply did like a one bank maneuver or whatever, say he was engaging something else or was stressed and that, that that's what he thought the best maneuver was, then, yeah, you have a range 2. So higher initiative pilots, Proton Torpedoes, mainly you want Proton Rockets for the lower initiative pilots that you get in your bullseye at range 1. Now, Breach does take a while to master. There will be many situations which you do not get your three seconds loop to clear a maneuver on someone, so you're basically left with only a focus and a barrel roll. And that's basically all about Breach. So like I said, you take, now like I just said there, you take some skill to play, but like I've been saying throughout the entire video, Breach is definitely a pilot worth learning on skill. And like I said, the beauty of this Breach is that he's only 58 points, so you could put on Proton Rockets, Proximity Mines, make him like... 69 points, which is extremely cheap and really, really effective. This means you can pair them with some really good combinations, such as Kylo Ren, Blackout, First Order TIE Fighter Swarms, other SE Bombers, uh, Hollow, Von Red, Quick Draw. There's loads of pilot deck, pilots that can work really well with Breach, but the main thing is, is it's interesting that the First Order has like a lot of really good aces, like Hollow, Von Red, Midnight, Maldris, Quick draw, so many aces in the faction. So, is there a list that we can fit Breach into that has just super good high initiative aces with him as well? The answer is actually an obvious yes. And it's actually a list that you may have never thought could ever happen in X Wing 2.0. But, ladies and gentlemen, it can happen now. So, first of all, the first pilot you want to equip is obviously Breach. Now, the upgrades I'm going to give him are Iron Limiter Override, Engine Upgrade, Pen Analyzer, and Proton Torpedoes. Now, I was saying before that you want to add on Proton Rockets to help him out here, but unfortunately, there's not enough points in this list. Now, one idea to get around this is to simply use Plasma Torpedoes. Obviously, against a Shielded Ship, they'll do just, just as much damage as Proton Torpedoes. And then use proton rockets, because ro proton rockets can be used from range 1 to 2. Or concussion missiles with advanced proton torpedoes. Either way, it's going to be really good. It's not for attack dice, but it is sacrificable. And also for this list, by using cheaper alternatives, like instead of proton torpedoes, advanced proton torpedoes, you'll be able to have an issue a bit as well. But anyways, the other pilots we want to add on are Major Vonreg, 6 initiative ace from the First Order TIE Interceptor. Probably one of the best... Arc Dodgers considered that he's just a 6 initiative. And Quick Draw, another really strong pilot. And of course, we want to give Quick Draw Special Forces Gunner because without it, she's essentially just not the best. And finally, last but not least, we want to fit Midnight into this list as well. Okay, so with Quick Draw having Special Forces Gunner, Bonrick having nothing, Midnight having nothing, and Breach having Ion Limiter Override, Pattern Analyzer, Proton Torpedoes, and Engine Upgrade. You would expect this list to be just like 200, 02, or 205 points, right? Just barely not playable. Well, actually, this list with all these cards right here is actually only 200 points. Yes, that's right. This list is 200 points, and that's absolutely 
incredibly insane. That's three six initiative pilots with a five initiative bomber that does like focus target lock torpedo plus a boost plus a barrel roll during his turn. Like that is insane. Now, obviously, you need to know how to play Von Reg as an Arc Dodger, not needlessly risking his life. You need to know where and when to put Midnight, where and when to engage with Quick Draw, and where and when to, of course, engage and how to maneuver Breach around. But if you can get past all that stuff, this is the best list ever. Now, I know a lot of people are like, well, what about 5 X-Wings or 8 Vulture Droids? Can those beat this? Well, 5 X-Wings and 8 Vulture Droids, their highest initiative is 3. So literally everything in this list arc can arc dodge all of those ships or at least destroy the ship that can shoot before it does shoot. That's pretty insane. That's like say you have five X-Wings, you arc dodge four of them, but one of them has a shot on Midnight. That means Midnight plus everyone else just shoots that one X-Wing and kills it before it shoots at all. That's overpowered. Now, of course, we go on to the aces. Like, say you have a Sontar Feld, Sienna Re, and Darth Vader list. Well, that's three six initiative aces. Most likely, they have the initiative bid. But this is four ships that are coming against these three, and all four of these ships are super strong. You just basically have to get range one with everything, and or, of course, range two to three with Breach if you're using proton torpedoes, and just literally blast that ace off the table with superior firepower. Maybe you lose a guy, maybe you don't. Next round, you take out another dude. You end up having about two or three guys left on the final enemy ship. It's even better if the opponent's using a support ship, because then you can just basically fly past all the aces, eliminate the support ship, and then it's only two aces against all four of your guys. And it's just really nasty, because if your opponent in that situation lets Midnight live, if he ends up fighting Midnight in the final round, Midnight's going to give him the target lock, so he's not going to be able to modify any of his dice. Breach is going to be able to launch torpedoes at him, so he has to take out Breach as well. Quick Draw shoots twice, for crying out loud. And Von Reg, he just maneuvers around and is anno overall annoying. He might give you a strainer to plead, but you might just be able to shed that off of the blue maneuver. So, yeah, I guess Von Reg's kind of the letdown if you're flying against uh, Vader, Sumter, Fell. But even him, he can add, like, four attack dice with a target lock and a focus, just like Breach. So... That's a lot of dice coming against those two aces. So not only can this list counter ace, enemy ace lists, as well as two tight defenders really well, it can counter everything else that doesn't fly five or six initiative aces, which is basically every other list in the game. Now, granted, I do think five Y-Wings could potentially beat this list, but I think that the aces, this list could easily kill a Y-Wing or two every round while staying relatively away from the bombs. Like, the Y-Wings would have to focus one guy down in order for him to become ionized and go into the bomb field. And that might just not happen, depending on how spread out his Y-Wings are or how spread out the enemy, how this list ships are. So, yeah, it's this list is definitely the officially cracked meta. <laughs> so, yeah, that's just great. First Order is back on the meta table. Now, what should we call this list, of course? I mean, every good X-Wing list has a good name, like Rebel Beef, uh, First Order Super Fortress, when the First Order used to have the shuttles, and just Aces in general. Well, you could call this First Order Elites, or First Order Aces, or the best of the best First Order, but I'm actually going to call this Team Star Fox, which is no surprise, really. Some of you guys know my like for the Star Fox series. It's my favorite series, actually, past Star Wars now. Um, but yeah, anyway, so with Team Star Fox. So I believe that Fox McCloud should be Major Von Reg simply because the First Order TIE Interceptor is the closest thing to the R-Wing with it gaining a token. I mean, it's a it's a non-positive token, obviously, a strainer deplete token to do a barrel roll. But nonetheless, something happens when you do a barrel roll. Like in the Star Fox games, you do a barrel roll, you get a shield buff. In this game, you get a decrease or whatever, I guess. Breach would have to be Slippy because Slippy's pretty much the worst pilot in Star Fox and Breach is the lowest initiative pilot in this list. Also, Slippy tends to have always higher health stats with more tanky like firepower and stuff like that instead of like maneuverability and everything in Star Fox Command and Assault this was seen. Falco would have to be Quick Draw because, you know, I think he would be pretty aggressive and would shoot back if he gets shot. Now, of course, I know a lot of people are saying that this doesn't make any sense. Quick Draw is a female. But so is Midnight, so which one do you want to have be Falco? The little weak one or the bigger one that shoots back? Let's do the bigger one that shoots back. As for the Special Forces Gunner on Falco, I think that could be either Peppy or 
uh, Rob64, but I'm going to go with Peppy because that sounds good. Hell, you could actually put Cat Monroe as Quick Draw and put Falco as the Special Forces Gunner. But let's do Peppy as Special Forces Gunner and Falco as Quick Draw because that makes sense. And finally, Crystal as Midnight. Now, the match for this ability is because Crystal's kind of telepathic, so she sees what's going on with the enemies before they can react to it. Well, before they react, she kind of sees what they're going to do with their actions. So Midnight kind of has a similar ability where when she target locks someone, they can't modify their dice. So I guess the similarity would be Crystal knowing where the target is going to be so her shots hit or knowing where the target's fire is coming from so that she can avoid it. Just like Midnight's, you know, canceling a modding there. Um, and just like Crystal, she can only really focus on like one area or group of enemies. So Midnight can only focus on one enemy at a time as well. So it kind of makes sense and adds up to something really cool. I guess Midnight might be telepathic, just like Crystal's. But anyways, these two are perfect combinations, so... Yeah, I guess, I don't know, they mirror each other really well. So that concludes how to use Breach, as well as the different combinations that work really well for him and what to expect and how to fly him, as well as the Team Star Fox list. Now, like I said, this is an absolutely OP list. Three six-initiative pilots with a five-initiative bomber that gets focused, target lock, and a boost in a barrel. Woo, that is a good list. Replacing Proton Torpedoes with Advanced Proton Torpedoes, giving you a 7-point initiative bid. Yeah, this is a list that's going to be sticking around for a while in the game. <laughs> the only way it's going to be uh, like appropriately nerfed is if they like buff all the pilots up by 1 point, which they just recently debuffed because they needed more play, uh, and buff like Breach by 5 or 6 points. So definitely the Breach increase will happen, but I'm not sure about the other pilots. So... Yeah, it's a list that's going to exist for a while, so enjoy it while it goes forever. But yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you'd like to see any more list builds or just pilot things that I've done. Uh, the next video will be about SE bombers and how to fly them, as well as different strategies. Not sure if I'm going to include bombs and torpedoes in the same video, but I will be doing... So I'll either be doing a video on bombs, another video on torpedoes, or a video with both of them in the same thing. We'll see, basically. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what types of other things you'd like to see. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. May the force be with you, and good luck.